Wayne, happy new year to start with, mate. Um, I'm bloody gutted for you. I got to say that. Um, you know, as a as a as an old mate and everything else. How you know? How have you fe- how are you feeling right now after you've reflected over Christmas and New Year? Yeah, well, it's been great to to get back to New Zealand for a few weeks, um, get a bit of sunshine, and yeah, and let the dust settle. Really, um, yeah, obviously very disappointed not to have seen the job through to the World Cup, but um, you know, it's uh, fine margins at this level of the game, and. Ultimately, um, the buck stops with me when it comes to results, you know. So, yeah, very disappointed, but um, certainly, uh, you know, now looking forward to the next challenge. So when did, it, when did it feel to you that it was inevitable that they were going to sit you down and say, Wayne, no, 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 we are, we are, we are going to replace you? Yeah, probably after the Georgia game, to be honest. Um, you know, a game that Wales should never lose and certainly... Uh, after the game, you know, it's just body language. You can tell it was, for me, it was, yeah, it was, uh, the writing was on the wall then. And obviously we, we had one more game to play against Australia. And, you know, that game was, um, well, it was, it was, you know, for 60 odd minutes of the game, it was a, a record score against Australia and we were cruising. And then uh, to lose it the way we did um, with a few yellow cards and an injury was, um, was pretty gutting really. So, yeah, all in all, very disappointing. I mean, well, you know, and, and, and what can you put this down to? Obviously, you look deep inside yourself and you question everything about your methods, about, um, you know, what your planning was, your strategies, all of that, your game tactics, all of those things. But at the same time, it has to be acknowledged as well that you had a hell of a lot of injuries. I know that, you know, that probably doesn't come down on the balance sheet when people are looking as to whether you keep your job or not. But, you, you know, I'm just talking about regrets. What is What is the biggest one that you have? And is it that, the amount of injuries you had? Yeah, well, certainly it's played a big part um, because, you know, we're not the biggest rugby playing nation in the world. We don't have a lot of the, the same stocks as, say, the French or the English or, uh, or New Zealand. But certainly, uh, you know, we look back to 2021 when we had that stellar season and won the um, won the championship here in the Six Nations. And, you know, that side hasn't played together since. So, you know, we're, we're building depth. We've been trying to build depth over the last three years in certain positions. And, of unearthed some some good young talent, but uh, certainly that has been you know an issue for us. All sides get injuries from time to time, but um, you know over the course of the three years, um, that probably we haven't had too much luck in that area of the game. Wayne Peebick is with us on the platform. Dumped last year as the as the Welsh coach. Uh, did you did you did you plead your case, mate? Did you say, look, just give us the Six Nations, give us give us give us that, and let me see if I can, if, if if I can rewrite the ship. Oh, look, you know, you go through a review process. We, we go through a review after each campaign, and um, this one was no different. But there was no real um, real discussion at the end of it. It was, you know, results are what counts, and we didn't get the results that we needed to. And so for me, it was, um, you know, I'm the guy at the forefront of it all, and, and uh, you know, I accept um, the responsibility of those results. And you know that going into the job, you know, it's... It, um, it's pretty cutthroat at this level of the game. And, you know, I'm just thankful that I've had uh, 24 odd years of, as a professional coach and um, and, and done pretty well uh, over those four years. What kind of toll does it take on you emotionally and how long does it take to get over something like this? I mean, it might be a bit early to ask that question, but I mean, you know, we all sit here on the outside and we make comments, we make judgments, we make criticisms, we make everything else. We kind of always ignore and forget there's a human side to this as well. Yeah, it's, it, and it's not just yourself, it's your family and friends. Look, um, we've had really, really good support, to be honest. Uh, 24, within 24 hours of, of this going public, um, a lot of support, not only from um, you know, rugby people in Wales, but also uh, a lot of the media uh, in terms of you know, the professionalism that we're showing throughout this, this sort of process. And, you know, you've got to put the team first um, when all this happens. Um, you know, I'm there to do a role uh, and it's there to get the best out of the team. And, um, you know, we've always got to put the team first. And certainly, you know, there's disappointment that comes with not being able to see the job out, but also the realism that um, this can happen at any stage. And, you know, it's, it's getting more and more like football as, as time goes by. And football in England is what you're talking about, aren't you? And I mean, you know, we watch the Premier League and every week it seems that somebody's, you know, head's on the chopping block or certainly that the media talk about. It. The, the the pressure that's created ex- externally, how much of that do you think has a role to play? So if you are really copping the criticism and because of social media now, there's another avenue to it as well. Does that, do you think, influence those that make the decisions? 
Oh, look, I'm not too sure. I mean, you'd have to ask those people that. But from my point of view, it's, you know, I've been doing this job for a long time now in terms of a head coach role. And I've got some young coaches around me. And, and part of my role is to protect those guys so they can just get on and focus on, on the game. And look, we don't worry too much about what goes on in social media. Everyone's allowed their opinions. And certainly as a spectator, I've always had my opinion. So uh, it's no different when you're in the hot seat. So, look, it, it goes with the territory. Um yeah, and it's it's just one of those things where you accept that and, and you move on. What happens to your support staff, your team, the other coaches, all those people around you, Wayne? Did they did they does their employment stop the day that yours does? Um, well, there's been some change. Um, a couple of the coaches, other coaches, have moved on. Um, but any coach that comes in, you know, has the opportunity to build the, the team that they want around them, which is which is part of the course, and the same thing happened when I came in. So we, we made some change, and that's just uh, that's just uh, normal. It's the reality of what goes on. Have you spoken to Warren Gatland at all? No, no, I've I've just been um, dealing with, uh, you know, the the present I had to get back from my son's uh, eldest boy Matthew's wedding, um, which was last week, and so you know we had some exciting things to think about um, once we're back in New Zealand. So we just bought a beach house there as well. So. Yeah, you know, there's some things to take my mind off it. And now, um, you know, we're back in, in the UK now and it's it's uh, fully focused on on the next potential role. You haven't brought it down why he where Gats has got his, has he? Have you? <laughs> no. No, I bought a place in Rural Kaka, actually. Beautiful. Boston. It's a beautiful spot. Yeah. yeah, it's a lovely spot. The way that Warren plays, you know, and he came under a lot of criticism of the way that he, he coaches, rather, for Warren Ball and that. It's a different style to yours. What were you trying to achieve with this team style-wise and playing-wise? Well, I think what you saw in 2021, where we won the championship, I think it was a record number of tries. What we wanted to do was um, just try to uh, build on the attacking side of the game because Wales uh, obviously had a very, very good defensive game, a uh, very disciplined side, and uh, were a very, very hard team to beat under Warren. Uh, his record um, would show that. So for us, it was just trying to to build on that, um, and the attacking side of the game is what we where we thought we could make um, the most inroads. Certainly 2021 was was our best period. Um, and obviously we were looking forward to the Rugby World Cup where you have eight weeks with the team to um, change, do whatever you want to do going into that competition. A lot of teams hold things back and we were probably uh, going to look to build on the attacking side of the game again from what we did in 2021. So you have a great year in 2021 and then you have a stink year in 2022. Shouldn't those two balance each other out before? And then, you know, I mean, they're, 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 I'm just sort of thinking out loud here, but shouldn't that be, you know, okay. I mean, if they're going to sack you, why don't they sack you after, after you have a good year? I mean, as stupid as that sounds, but you know, but you know, you probably, you know, probably know where I'm coming from. Oh, look, at the end of the day, we're, we're the first to admit that we weren't consistent enough, you know, and, uh, Injuries or no injuries, there were games of rugby there that we should have won and we didn't. And uh, ultimately, that's what you judged on. Yeah, that's what you're judged on. What about the players, though? Oh, look, players come and go. Um, you know, and under any coaching regime, there'll be those that are deemed to have been playing well and, and those that uh, are looking to improve. Um, coaching's no different. Why? So, would you do anything differently when you're looking back? And I suppose again, you need probably more time to reflect on that question. But just to the, you know, your thoughts. I'm sure that it's crossed your mind over the summer while you're sitting there thinking, "Oh, okay, should I? Maybe I could have. Maybe I could have. Maybe I could have." Yeah, look, hindsight's a, a great thing, isn't it? You know, um, there might be the odd selection here and there, but look, ultimately, um, it comes down to the you know the style of game you want to play and. I think we did that well at times, and other times we didn't. So probably for me, it's it's making sure that we we're more consistent than we were, and there's there's a lot of factors that come into that. But ultimately, I control that, and so you know, it wasn't as is the results weren't as good as I would have liked personally. And um, you know, we judge ourselves. We're probably the most critical on ourselves as coaches. So yeah, look, you know, there were some highlights, obviously, which I'm really really proud of. Um, you know, winning that championship and, and getting the rec record points and tries and obviously winning for the first time in South Africa for a Welsh team. So there are some things uh, to be proud of and also, you know, unearthing some very, very good young talent, which I think will, you know, um, hold Wales in good stead going forward through to probably 2027. Wayne Pivak is with us, dismissed as coach of Wales last year, and uh, you'll be hearing a heck of a lot more from Wayne over the next few days. Big media round um, in the next 24 hours in England as well. 
after winning that test in South Africa, and I remember speaking to you after that test, before that third test, and it was, I think at that stage, uh, you know, we'd, uh, we all, I think we were square with Ireland, and I think Argentina was square with Scotland, I think uh, Aussie was square with England, and you'd squared it up against Wales, and that was such a significant achievement. I mean, did you ever imagine for a second from, from that high there, and how you were feeling then, that all of a sudden, within what, four or five months, it's over? Yeah, well, I think um, the performances in South Africa, in particular the first test, actually, where they probably had their strongest team out, and um, we played very, very well in that match, and a couple of yellow cards, and we ended up losing it at the death yes, with, right, with a penalty yes. after mm. being 29 all. So, look, we put in some pretty good performances there, but, <clears throat> you know, uh, I didn't see the Georgia performance coming in and some of the performances in the autumn. So, And ultimately, we're responsible for that, so... Look, again, you just reflect on it and, um, you know, you look at the things that uh, that went well and you're proud of those moments and, you know, no, no one will ever take those away. So we, we've won a championship up there in the Northern Hemisphere. A lot of coaches don't get to do that and, and obviously winning in South Africa, no other coach has done that. So, yeah, the, the, the highs are very high at the international level and the lows, lows can be pretty low. What happened against Georgia, Wayne? <laughs> oh, look, there's, there's a lot of things that... Um, you know, when you when you review games and you look at them and you you, you don't just look at the 80 minutes, you look at the preparation and you, and you look at the week that was um, leading into the match. And, you know, if we had our time again, there's probably things that um, we would uh, hope would, would be done differently. But, you know, I mean, did you did you see it coming at all? I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, it was such a such a shock result. But they had so much to play for. I mean, let's not forget with Georgia. Georgia had no mugs. Georgia were a great team. That was like their World Cup final. They, they were wanting to, see, you know, put the finger to World Rugby and say, listen, we need to be at the table now. Look at us. And so they had all this motivation and everything to play for. Look, the All Blacks lost this year. I mean, sorry, last year to Ireland at home. We lost to Argentina at home. You know, and look at the c- catastrophic fallout that happened here in New Zealand. Was it similar to that? Yeah, I, I guess it is. Um, you know, it's a result that, um, in my view, personally, uh, should never have happened. And, um, you know, we've got to live with that result. It's not one that we're proud of. I think um, everybody that was involved would look back and it's one that they'd want to forget, you know, and, and think more about the, the highs than, than that particular low. And, uh, look, Georgia are a team that's improving. They, they had a lot to play for, but um, we also had a lot to play for after beating Argentina the week before and we were keen to back that up and then finish on a high. So, um, you know, it just shows that this level of the game, um, whether it's the mindset's not quite there or the preparation's not quite right, it can um, it can lead to catastrophic uh, results. And that's, uh, that's what happened on that particular day. And it's certainly one uh, which I want to forget, to be quite honest. When you talk about preparation, does that come down to you? Do you is that where you put your hand up? Oh, look, pre- preparation's not about one person. Obviously, uh, ultimately, we, we put it in the uh, the week that we're going to have and, you know, what sort of what we want to put into the training week and how we're going to play the game. U- ultimately, there's a lot of people that, uh, a lot of pieces of the puzzle in terms of um, putting a performance together on a Saturday. If you'd beaten Australia, if, you know, it, if the last 20 minutes had happened, would you still be in that job? Um. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. My gut is after the my gut feeling is after Georgia. Um, you know, we were we were pretty much uh, you know staring down the barrel, if you like. So, you know, at thirty three fourteen, I think it was, um, or thirty four thirteen, I think we were we were pretty happy in the in the grandstand and feeling like um, we we're playing some pretty good pretty good rugby. But uh, yeah. Again, I, I guess it's just the the, the the season that we had that uh, it finished up the way it did, and it was very, very disappointing. Is it? I mean, throughout your your life, you've gone through other things, other jobs you've had. You know, been in the police and all of that kind of stuff. I know that that puts a hell of. I mean, you know, I, that's what I love about Steve Hansen as well. It puts a hell of a perspective on when you're a rugby coach because you're dealing with a hell of with with real life hideous stuff. And actually, you know, here we are talking about sport, which is you know what we love talking about and what we love doing. But you know, at the same time, you know, do you? It, do you do you do you sit? How how long does it take for you to be as, I suppose, as accepting of it as you are at the moment, or do you think that there's still time ahead in the future where you're going to sit there and actually get pretty bummed out about all this? No, no, I, I'm I'm grateful for the opportunity that the Welsh Rugby Union has given me. You know, um, you've just got to be on the bus going down Westgate Street before a Test match, and the, you know thousands of people are lining the streets. Um, you follow the horses in. Uh, on the bus and you know you get to a stadium it's packed full of 75,000 people singing and 
it is just a wonderful experience and to have been part of that um, and part of history, you know, creating some history in South Africa, as I say, and winning a championship, you know, it's, um, I'm just grateful for the opportunity I've had and, and the time and, and the experiences and the experience I've got from that. So I think I'll be a better coach for it going forward. And, um, you know, no, I, I don't dwell on things for too long and move on and look, and, you know, I'm now looking for the next opportunity where, you know, we can go and challenge ourselves again and, um, and, and look to get back on the horse and, and enjoy uh, the great game that uh, we're involved in. Well, a couple of quick questions. We'll let you go. And I thank you so much for your time as always, mate. Wayne Pivak with us on the platform. What does the future hold then? Yeah, well, it's um, it's that time now where, you know, clubs over here start looking at what they want to do um, for the following season. Obviously, the World Cup's just around the corner and there'll be changes made and, and with coaches retiring and other coaches being moved on or whatever the situation may be. So both international and club rugby, um, I'd, I'd be keen to do either or. So whether that's um, in the Northern Hemisphere or Southern Hemisphere, you know, um, we're an open book really. So uh, just looking forward to seeing what may uh, what may be around the corner. Well, there's Eddie Jones is out there as well, mate. There's a couple of good coaches looking for work at the moment. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, it's um, it's 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 interesting times. Two quick questions about the All Blacks before we go. We put fifty points on you. How good were the All Blacks? How good are the All Blacks? How good can the All Blacks be this year? Do you think? Look, I think after the changes that uh, were made uh, in the New Zealand coaching setup and the playing group that they settled on, um, I was always concerned when they were coming, having them first up and uh, getting caught cold, if you like, but. Uh, look, they're a very, very strong side. I think um, you know the lessons learnt from the from the Irish series, and as I say, the changes that have been made. Look, I, I think uh, they're a very, very strong team going into the World Cup, and going to be a very, very hard team to beat. Obviously, the the game against France is going to be an exciting one early on in the competition, but from that point on, um, you know who knows. But uh, yeah, a lot of talent on that side. Who wins it this year, Wayne? Who do you think wins that tournament? Because I'm sitting here thinking that, and, it's, and I'll tell you what, this is how this is the kind of stupidity of my thought pattern at the moment, that the All Blacks aren't going to win it, but at the same time, the All Blacks have got as good a chance as anyone else because I don't think that there's any clear team that actually is actually sitting there saying we're consist- consistent enough to win a quarter semi and a final against three tier one teams. Yeah, well, I think at the moment, the form team up here is France. Everyone's talking about Ireland being number one in the world, but they haven't beaten France for the last two years. Um, and as we know, um, they don't have the best record at a Rugby World Cup having never gotten past the quarterfinals. Uh, they tend to um, play very, very well leading up to it, um, as history would show. And So, I, look, for me, I think all the pressure's on France um, in their own backyard. There's, there's huge expectation up this part of the world that, that they'll go on and win it for the first time. It puts a lot of pressure on them. I think New Zealand, for the first time, probably doesn't have the, the expectation of well, from this part of the world anyway, of being the hot favourites. Um, so I think that makes them a very dangerous team and you can never write off South Africa. So it's probably going to be one of the most even World Cups uh, where you go into it and no one really knows who's going to win it. But um, I think New Zealand's got a very, very good chance. Well, we thank you always so much for your time, mate. You're so gracious. Um, you're very generous with your time with us and um, all the very best for whatever the future holds. No problem, Martin. Thank you for the time.